the timing and the place of the message. Rasulullah delivers this message of the Imamat of Amirul Mu'mineen in a place known as Ghadir Khum. They mentioned 120,000 people attended that Hijjatul Wida, that final Hajj. 120,000 was a grand number. Sometimes you would have entire cities whose population was 10 or 20,000. At that time, 120,000 people are performing the Hajj with Rasulullah. Rasulullah decides to deliver the message in Ghadir Khum. A person asks, or a person may ask, Ya Rasulullah, why didn't you deliver the message in Makkah? Why wouldn't you deliver the message in Arafah? Is there any better place to have delivered the message of the wilaya of Amirul Mu'mineen inside of Makkah by the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The best place on earth, the symbol of Tawheed is there. Rasulullah, despite knowing the sanctity of the land of Makkah, Rasulullah didn't make the announcement of the imamate of Amirul Mu'mineen in Makkah. Why? Lest this command of the imamate of Amirul Mu'mineen becomes diluted in the many other rulings that the Prophet was delivering in regards to Manasik Hajj. So there were so many messages that were coming out from Rasulullah towards the masses in regards of how to do Tawaf, in regards of how to do Sa'i between Safa and Marwa and all the Manasik Hajj. Within all this information, if the Wilayah of Amirul Mu'mineen was also announced the message number one could have been diluted number two people would have said they would have sidelined the message by saying no hajj is more important than the wilay of amirul mu'minin so rasulullah ensured he selected a time and a place where the key word where the announcement of amirul mu'minin would gain exclusivity exclusivity in announcing the imamat of Amirul Mu'mineen. Number two, location. You find even in the real estate and even when it comes to opening up businesses khasatan that are there in retail and so on and so forth, what are the three things you are told? Location, location, location. Location is key to everything. Rasulullah chooses Ghadir Khum. This Ghadir Khum, which is a central gathering point on the route for people who are returning back from Mecca after completing the Hajj. The final point, from Ghadir Al Khum, everybody begins to separate and disintegrate. From Ghadir Khum, those people who are going to Hijaz or continuing on to Medina will take a different route. Those who are going on to Egypt, Misr will take a different route. Those who are going to Yemen will take a different route. This is the final point where everybody is one. Rasulullah reaches Ghadir Khum. He stops. People have gone forward. It's 120,000 people. People have gone as far forward as Juhfa. Rasulullah stops and he sends a messenger. Those people who have gone to Juhfa, call them back. Juhfa was seven hours distance from Ghadir Khum. They were so ahead in the journey from Juhfa to Ghadir Khum, traveling on a camel, a jalakumala or a donkey, at a normal average speed is calculated to be seven hours distance. So you can imagine Rasulullah has stopped in Ghadir Khum, waiting for all those people who are at the back to catch up with him. Those who are gone ahead into Juhfa, retract, come back, retrace your steps. Seven hours, there are people waiting inside of Ghadir Khum. The Prophet made the people wait for seven hours until those who have gone to Juhfa come back. If you look into the books of history, what is apparent is that from the 120,000, it's not a far-fetched conclusion that 80,000 people were already inside of Ghadir Khum. And the Prophet has made 80,000 people wait so that the other 40,000 can come. Just convey the message to the 80 and they will convey it to the remaining 40. Other than Rasulullah makes them wait for seven hours human psychology for this grand message that is coming. Rasulullah is creating a sense of 
anticipation within the hearts of the people. This is Rasulullah, Sayyidul Balagha. Look at all these tactics and these skills that he has used. Exclusivity of a message, location of the message, creating an anticipation towards the message. People from Juhfa come back. This area of Khadir Khum was an area where water used to collect. The water used to collect in a valley. This valley, what is understood from Kitab al Ghadir and other secondary texts, is that it was a valley, it would not be. It would not be far fetched to say it was the size of a football stadium. But valley enclaved inside. For the people were seated around the valley. Rasulullah stands in the center of the valley with Amirul Mu'mineen. Ya'ani, in addition to creating anticipation and the location and the exclusivity of the message, the Rasulullah was orally going to convey the message, but he stands and makes himself the center of attention so that you engage the people through sight and through hearing. Rasulullah not only made sure that the message reaches 120,000 people through Kalam. He positioned himself inside of Ghadir Khum, in the center of the valley so that people could see him as well as hear him. They could see Amir al not somebody comes tomorrow and says, we couldn't recognize Amir al by appearance. Rasulullah eliminated any sort of hujja if it came to saying, we didn't know. Strategy of Rasulullah, in addition to everything that he has done, made himself the center of attraction and location and exclusivity of the message and creating the sense of anticipation. Rasulullah selects the time of the day that has extreme heat. The narrations mention that Rasulullah delivered a khutbah that was three hours long. It was not in the nature of Rasulullah to deliver a sermon so great. If you return back to the books of Sirah, you will find that majority of the historians are of the opinion and from the sermons that have reached us, that the sermons of Rasulullah never exceeded more than half an hour to an hour, max. Mostly they would not exceed half an hour. Rasulullah here makes an exception. The khutbah of Ghadir lasted for three hours. And that even in the heat, at its peak, it's the time of Zawwal. The sun is overhead. Ajeeb. Ya Rasulullah, wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. You were only, you, we didn't send you except that you are a source of mercy. They were feet were burning. Why? everything Rasulullah did. He ensured that for a period of three days the people would give bay'ah, pledge allegiance to Amirul Mu'mineen before dispersing and leaving for their homes. Even if a person slept through everything, even if a person couldn't hear and couldn't see, even if a person passed out in the heat of that khutbah, he had no excuse to say that we didn't know about the wilaya of Amir al muminin because finally when he would wake up or whatever happened, he couldn't leave Ghadir Khum until and unless he pledged his allegiance to Amir al muminin this one word from within the Quran that Allah Azza wa Jal uses, Balikh, convey. Look at the pain that Rasulullah went through to deliver this message of the Wilayat of Amir al muminin Look at how everything was meticulously planned by the Prophet of Islam. And after all this, he says, and convey this message to those who are not present.